Hi, I'm Alexa. Through combining census data with administrative data, the ABS has been delivering new statistical insights not previously available from these sources on their own. The Census Futures section has been conducting research into ways admin data can be used to enhance the census. Today, I am presenting on behalf of my colleague, James Moll, and will present results from research into adding more income information to the census using admin data. I will showcase experimental measures for three additional income topics created for the 2016 census using integrated administrative data developed to demonstrate the potential for it to enhance the census. The census collects personal income for all persons aged 15 years and over and excludes overseas visitors. People are asked to report usual income in ranges. While the census measure of total weekly income supports a wide range of analysis, Demand exists for additional income topics to complement and extend the range of socioeconomic analysis that can be undertaken. The ABS's consultation on topics for the 2021 census highlighted continued interest in the sources of a person's or household's income, such as government pensions, allowances, investment income, wages and superannuation. It also showed continued interest in a more precise measure of total income that is collected using a dollar value rather than a range category. Three additional income topics were created for the 2016 census using integrated administrative data. Main source of income, which identifies the source from which a person or household receives the largest amount of their income. Main source of government payments, which identifies for those who receive pension or allowance, the type of payment that they mainly receive. And previous financial year income, which provides an estimate for the total amount of income earned by a person or household between July 2015 and June 2016, that is the financial year prior to census night. This research utilised administrative data linked by the ABS for the multi-agency data integration project in conjunction with the 2016 census to develop experimental estimates for additional income measures. The MADAP is a partnership among Australian government agencies to develop a secure and enduring approach for combining information to create a comprehensive picture of Australians over time. Authorised researchers can use unidentified MADAP data for statistical research purposes. The administrative sources used in this research do not provide comprehensive coverage of individual income earned by Australians. Some individuals are not included on the data sets and some types of income are not covered. Tax data from the Australian Taxation Office covers all individuals who submit an individual income tax return or receive a payment summary from an employer and includes person with income from one or more of a range of sources. Social Security payments information from the Department of Social Services comprises individuals who receive a Centrelink income support benefit or payment. It includes payments for older people, people with a disability and those caring for people with a disability, student and labour market related payments, family assistance and other payments. I would like to acknowledge the support provided to the ABS by the ATO and the DSS in compiling the data for this research. Together, the two data sources provide information for 79% of the census population aged 15 years and over, with 65% present in either tax data or social security data and 14% present in both sources. Before I showcase the results of this research, a quick word on quality assessment. The three additional income topics created at person and household level were compared with similar measures from the ABS Survey of Income and Housing conducted throughout 2015-16. The SI is a household survey which collects detailed information on sources of income, amounts received, household net worth, housing, household characteristics and personal characteristics. While there are some key differences between the methodology of the census and the SI, particularly different reference periods and scope, the SI serves a useful comparison to evaluate the experimental administrative data-based measures for census. The linking of respondents to the 2015 SI to the 2016 census via the person linkage spine, which was developed to efficiently and effectively combine person-centered administrative data sets and is at the core of the MADIP data asset, additionally enabled comparisons of the measure reported in the SI to the estimates derived for census. I will now present the person level measures. Main source of income was assigned using a decision tree that assessed census information reported, social security information on payments, and personal taxation information on total income. 
A main source of income was derived for 96% of services persons aged 15 years and over. This compares with 91% who reported their personal income in the 2016 census. Employee income was the most common source of income for persons and households, with over half of the population receiving this as their main source, followed by government pensions and allowances. Comparing the proportions for census with similar measures from the SI, they are closest for superannuation and employee income. The largest difference is for investment income. 92% of people with employee income as their main source of income in the census also reported this same source in the SI. While those with employee income and government pension income had relatively high levels of alignment with their main source as reported in the SI, there was lower alignment for those with business income, superannuation and investment income. Because the SI and the census relate to different points in time and reference periods, it is difficult to tell the extent to which the differences reflect people changing their main source of income over time compared to the limitations in the administrative data and methods for deriving the census measure. Main source of government payments was assigned using a decision tree that assessed social security information on payments and personal taxation information on total income from government pensions and allowances. For persons and households in receipt of more than one type of government payment, the payment type contributing the largest proportion of their overall income from government payments was assigned. A main source of government payments was derived for 88% of census persons aged 15 years and over. Almost one third of all persons and one half of all households were in receipt of at least one type of government payment. The most common main source of government payments were age pension and family support payments. The census measure estimated a higher proportion of persons in receipt of a government payment compared to the SI. This is mainly influenced by the higher estimates for family support payments and unemployment and student allowances compared to the SI. People with the age pension and disability and carer payments as their main source of government payments had high levels of alignment with their main source as reported in the SI. There was lower alignment for those with unemployment and student allowances family support payments and other government pensions and allowances. Because the SI and the census relate to different points in time and reference periods, it is difficult to tell the extent to which the differences reflect people changing the government payments they receive over time compared to the limitations in the administrative data and methods for deriving the census measure. The results show an overall higher degree of alignment for main source of government payments compared to main source of income. Previous financial year income for 2015-16 was derived by adding all income from each income source, using information from individual tax returns, payment summaries and social security payment details. The annual measure differs somewhat to the usual income measure that is collected in the census. Annual income provides a longer term perspective of income, providing data about the income obtained from all sources over the whole year. Previous financial year income was calculated for 88% of census persons aged 50, 15 years and over. Despite the differences in the nature and reference periods of the measures, the distribution of previous financial year income loosely follows that of census personal income. While measures compare relatively closely for those with zero income and the higher end of the in income distribution, that is $65,000 and above, Differences are apparent for the low and middle end of the income distribution. Comparing the distribution of census previous financial year income for persons with an equivalent measure collected in the 2015-16 SI as in this figure, the distribution of the census measure has a lower peak, $14,000, than the SI measure, $20,000, reflecting no undercoverage of some income sources in the administrative data, particularly income from superannuation. Despite the differences in the peaks of the distributions, the average measures of income compare relatively well between the census and SI measures for both mean and median incomes. Overall, the three experimental measures developed for additional income topics for the 2016 census using integrated administrative data compare relatively closely to similar measures from the SI. They are considered fit for analytical purposes and will be made available for access in the MADIP modular product. A supplemental vulnerability indicators module containing these derived income measures is intended for release before the end of this year.